Hello one and all, my name is John Clow. This is John Star Car and you are very welcome. Anyway, today, I don't know if you've noticed in the last couple of videos, but there seemed to have been a bit of a technophobic aspect to what I was saying, both in terms of NFTs and their utter failure, and in terms of AI and the problems that could possibly and will probably arise out of that, uh, arise out of that. But for today, I wanted to take a slightly different tack. I wanted to counterbalance what I was saying before by you by talking about the tech that I personally use and how that benefits me in my creative work. The first thing I want to talk about is my trusty, ever-present iPad Pro. This thing here is the 2018 12.9 inch and I've had it since its release in 2018. Um, it was a very expensive investment as most Apple products are unfortunately but I feel that in terms of the fact that I've had this nearly five years it's done absolutely epically for me. Um, the program I use predominantly I, I've used to uh, in terms of Adobe Fresco and Procreate. But the one I always lean to is Procreate. And what's wonderful about Procreate is that it is one of the best um, apps full stop for the iPad Pro. It really does utilize just how effective an art creation machine this actually is. The great thing about Procreate compared to Adobe Fresco, the drawback with any Adobe product is that you need to pay for it monthly. If you go for Adobe Fresco alone, it's the 10 euro or 10 dollar or 10 pounds a month. If you're already use, utilizing Adobe's creative cloud software, its entire suite, then yeah, absolutely, it makes sense. So you can, it's a useful addition to, Pro, to Photoshop and to Lightroom. But if you're doing it just for, the, for as a uh, standalone art package, it's very hard to justify 120 euros a year. Procreate, on the other hand, you buy it once. It's about, I think when I bought it back in 2004 or five, I think no, 2014, 15, sorry. It was about, I think seven or eight, seven or eight pounds when I bought it. I think now it's since around 10 or 12, I'm not too sure. It is an incredibly good investment. They update it regularly. There's always new features. If you're an animator, this is probably one of the best gateways into animation. I'm not personally an animator, but if though, for those of you who are interested in it, I can't recommend it enough. So Procreate, I think is a brilliant program. Adobe Fresco, while a very good program in its own right, I, I wanna emphasize that. The caveat is, if you're already tied into the creative suite, absolutely make use of it. But if you're not, I would be very, judicious about investing 120 euros a year into that particular program i mean don't get me wrong the, the the brush engine in fresco is fantastic the fact that you can mix paints and mix colors in a very natural and organic way unbelievable i don't think i can in all consciousness and all good consciousness um advocate for adobe fresco so what are the benefits of utilizing these technologies over say traditional media. Now, in terms of the iPad Pro and utilize it, I can bring this with me anywhere. And it has my entire gallery of work that I've done up to now. That's what I'd say this between now and 2016, so 2023 to 2016, that's seven years worth of work that I'm able to carry with me everywhere. You can also do that with a sketchbook. The drawbacks of having a sketchbook is that once it's full up, you gotta go grab another one. Once it's full up, you gotta grab another one. But everything's here, everything's here. Um, also, it's portable. I mean, I, I bring this with me everywhere. If I'm in a coffee shop and I've got a few minutes to spare, I'll bring this out and do some sketching. If I'm sitting down doing streaming, John Starcart, Twitch, the fact that I can, while streaming, again, John Starcart, I can directly connect this into my laptop and it will record everything that I'm doing. 
which is another huge benefit. Another one of Procreate's great features is that you have time lapses and you can share those. You can actually share the process of your work, which I think is a fantastic feature. Uh, something I utilize, especially if I'm sharing work on Instagram or TikTok. Also John Stark Art. Then yeah, I can sit down and I can draw on this for hours. I mean, wherever I am in, or where I am in the world, as long as I've got this with me, I can draw. And that is uh, unbelievably useful to me as an artist. Um, especially if I want to go back into an old piece and if I want to alter it, if I want to improve upon it, which I have done. And it's a, again, it's just the flexibility and portability are the two real big advantages to working digitally for me. But what are the drawbacks? Well, the big drawback um, that you hear a lot of people say is when you're utilizing the Apple Pencil on a glass surface, a lot of people find it unfamiliar. Whereas I don't find this as much of an issue. Um, a lot of people do point that out as a problem to the point where they may put a screen protector on it with um, a rough surface to give you that kind of um, tactile feeling that you would get if you're using pencil on paper, say. While not a big issue for me, I can see it being an issue for other people. Uh, another drawback is really, when you draw something on paper, it's a one-off. Yeah, you can make copies of that original, but you always have the original work, the original painting, the original drawing. And there's something to be said for that. And you'll never be able to really truly do that with digital media. I know NFTs were allegedly supposed to be uh, a remedy for that. We all know how that turned out. You, I, don't, I don't foresee there being a way of having a truly unique piece because the great, I mean, while it's an amazing thing about digital work, the fact that you're able to replicate it so easily, it also can be a drawback, especially if you're looking to sell, sell work. So yeah, you, you, while you can do prints of both traditional and digital, the advantage traditional probably has is that you always have that tactile original, whereas you don't really get that with digital. To be perfectly honest with you, I see that, I don't see that as being an insurmountable problem. Having, that tac having a tactile original is undoubtedly an advantage, but again, it's not an insurmountable one because you can still make prints, you can still make money, you can still showcase your work. And that's something I intend to do, and what a lot of digital artists are able to do, especially if you go onto websites like DeviantArt, even Instagram. While there are drawbacks and there are pluses, generally speaking, I love working digitally. I think it's a fantastic way of working, and I really see this as the future of my art personally. I would love at some point to go back into developing traditional media and when I have the space and finances, because one of the drawbacks of traditional media is getting good quality materials, good quality paper, inks, pencils, all that sort of thing. It's expensive. The great thing about using Procreate and Adobe Fresco is the versatility. You've got an infinite amount of brushes and infinite amount of uh, pen types you can use, pencil types you can use, oil paint strokes, watercolors, everything. It's just unreal in terms of its flexibility, in terms of its versatility. While the initial cost of getting into this, buying an iPad, buying the pencil, buying the programs, initially it's quite expensive. But once you have it paid for, man, you're away. The one thing I do actually want to kind of segue into here, I've had this iPad nearly five years. Um, and do I intend on upgrading on it? Right now, no. And you've got to bear in mind, there's been, I think, three or four different iterations of this iPad since then. The latest one only came out last year. It's got the M2 chip in it. It's got mini LEDs and everything else. But in terms of the actual usability of the iPad, do I see it as being a big enough in, um, reason for me to reinvest, to upgrade? Really, no. Even with the iPad Airs, a lot of them are perfectly usable and not even perfectly usable, but are excellent tools. Um, I'd be wary, especially when it comes to YouTube with all the tech fetishism that seems to be very prevalent on the platform, uh, where you're always seeing the newest and the shiniest. Be wary of that. Don't try and buy something for future proofing. Buy something that you need now. And 
look, if you can, inv if you can afford to upgrade, great, go for it. But don't feel that is something that you necessarily have to do. Buy something, use it until the legs fall off of it, and then fine. If it stops working, if the battery doesn't charge, if you know there's the screen's busted beyond all recognition, whatever, then okay, invest the money if you feel it's worth the investment. Um, but in terms of upgrading for the sake of upgrading, I would advise against. I would advise against it. It's not something that you need to do. Buy what you need for the now. And not only that, don't be worried. It doesn't have to be the latest and greatest either. Bear in mind, you can buy one of these, the exact same one I've got here, the 2018 12.9 inch. You can buy that for about probably a quarter of the price of a brand new comparable iPad Pro that's available now. So if you are going to buy it, if you are going to invest in it, please do. If you feel that you can, do it. I can, cannot recommend it enough. But be mindful of your budget. Don't worry about future proofing. Procreate's a brilliant program. It scales brilliantly and it's very versatile. Technology is good. Utilize technology. Be wary of snake oil salesmen. Be wary of things like NFTs. But when it comes to utilizing technology for the benefit of your eye, and you've got to bear in mind also, usually at the vanguard of new technologies are artists. Same thing happened with photo photography, same thing has happened with digital, and the same thing will happen with AI. If you want to work digital, look, if you want to go with Apple, go with Apple. If you want to go with Android, go with Android, man. Um, Samsung tablets are banging, man. Microsoft Surface tablets are awesome. Uh, and a lot of the software is available across all platforms. Choose the platform that you feel is available, uh, that is best for you, and go out and create make art and enjoy doing it more to the point be creative express yourself do what makes you happy and then share it with the world in whatever way you see fit anyway my name has been john claire this has been john stark and you have been very welcome see you next time